myself Shweta Shah. I am at the Institute for the subject of the organization and architecture. In this subject, we have started unit 3 that is assembly language programming. In this unit, we are going to see today the topic subroutine and IO program. So, let me start with the first topic that is subroutine. Uh, we frequently the same piece of code must be written over again in many different parts of the program so that you can do this repetitive task and for that you if you write this repetitive task for many times then you will require so many locations or so many memory locations to store your program instead of uh, repeating the code every time it is needed there is an advantage if the common instructions are written only once and then uh, you are using this whenever required as you are using in a uh, c as a function okay whenever you require you are calling the function and completing your task instead of that you can write that whole task so many times also but instead of using that task as a function you can complete your task or you can make your code compact okay uh, here a set of common instruction that can be used in programs many times is called as a subroutine in c language we are calling it as a uh, function here we can say it as a subroutine and each time that subroutine is used in a main part of the program a branch is executed to the beginning of the subroutine and then your return address in C language, after executing your function, you have to return to the main program. In here also, after executing this repetitive task, you have to return to the main program. After executing this subroutine, you have to return to the main program. Uh, so, you have to store this return address and that return address is generally going to be stored at the beginning of your subroutine. Okay. And after the subroutine executed, a branch is made back to the main program by using that first locations contain that contains your location of main program. Okay. So by this way, we can uh, use this subroutines. Okay. In this, simply we are using some codes that are repetitively used by your program by means of some code lines, and whenever it required, you will call that or you can call that subroutine you will execute that instructions after executing you will return to the main program and before uh, executing that subroutine you will store this return address okay how this return address is going to be stored we will see with this example for example if we have a, a code if you have to design some code that will convert this hex number for example if we have this number one two three four and we want to convert this number into 2340. For all of this number, what we want to do, we want to shift this number 4 times and mask first 12 bits and make LSB side 4 bit 0. Okay, after shifting. That means we have to first shift this bits 4 times. That means 1, 2, 3, 4. If you shift this bits 4 times, uh, left or right, whatever shifting you use then your number will be like 2, 3, 4, 1. This 4, after shifting this 4 times, this 1 will be shifted over here. Okay. So, your shift, after shifted your uh, number will be like 2, 3, 4, 1. And after that, you want to mask your this first 12 bits. That means first 3 hex bits. Or you can say hex number. And ma make this LSB side 4 bit as a Z. That means you will have 2, 3, 4, Z. And you will require you require to complete this same task for so many data. Okay, so you can design the subroutine for this task, and whenever it required, you can call the subroutine and I complete your task. Okay, so let me design the subroutine for this task. Here we have started uh, storing this result from hundred location, and we have also used here hundred location. So that you can compare this, how this is going to be stored into a memory. So at 100th location, your first instruction is going to be stored. Okay. So first we have to load, uh, we have stored this number. Here, for example, we are considering we have two numbers, x and y. Okay. And then uh, on this number, we want to do this operation that we will shift to four times and then uh, mask the upper 12 bits. Okay. So, uh, this we will do by this means. First, we will load this first number and then 
BSA instruction that is branch and store return address. This instruction is used for branching but in branching it is going to storing the return address also. Return address will be the address of your next instruction that is the address of this STA instruction. Okay, that is going to be first stored at uh, the first location of that subroutine that you have stored at location SH4 onwards. Okay, at SH4 location onwards you have used your subroutine and at first location you have stored the CU that, so that you can store your return address over that location. That it will go to this first uh, subroutine then it will execute that subroutine and then return to this STA instruction then store this uh, result at x location then load the second number then uh, go to the subroutine same task for the y number okay then store this result to the y location and so if you have so many numbers x y z up to 100 number you have to store these numbers over here then uh, call this subroutine by using this bsa instruction okay in subroutine we have to design the subroutine for this SH4 also. In subroutine, we have first used the location with zero content by using this HEX0 instruction. After this, we have to do this shifting of left or right, but four times shifting. Okay, so that we have used CIL, 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 CIL instruction four times. After this shifting, we have to mask this four bit. And for this, our mask will be like f f f 0 okay so we will do the ending operation with f f f 0 you can directly do this ending or you can store this number to some location msk at msk location you will store this number h e x f f f 0 and here we are doing this ending with this contain this label okay you can directly do ending with a and d f f f 0 also and you can do like this also okay after this your subroutine is completed that means your ending task shifting task is completed you have to return to the main program so for returning to the main program you have to use this instruction b u m s h 4 i why i because sh4 is the location where your return address is stored not you, you don't require to jump to the sh4 location but you have to jump to the location which is stored at sh4 location that is your indirect addressing okay so here we have used this instruction bu and sh4 i so it will first go to the sh4 location where you have stored your return address and after that return address it will go to the that address that is given by this instruction. So let me see with the locations also. First, first your instruction LDA access executed. That means your 1234 number. Here 1234 number is going to be stored at location accumulator. Then you will call this subroutine VSA SH4. At subroutine, your at first location, your return address, your return address will be the location of this ST instruction that is like 102. So first 102 is going to be stored at this SH4 location. Then circular shifting four times, then ending, and then branching to the SH4. SH4 is your containing your result address. That that address is 102 so that it will jump to the location one after going to here sh4 102 it will jump to the 102 location then second number is second thing your result is going to be stored after the stripping and masking 2340 is going to be stored at location x after that you will load second number jump to the subroutine return from the subroutine store this number to the y location and so on you can do this task for any number of times. Whenever required, call the subroutine by using the instruction BSA and then address of your subroutine. So, by this way, we can use this subroutine whenever required. Next, we can see the input output programming. In this input output programming, we can use this instruction SKI and SKO. SKI is instruction.
instruction for checking the input flag. If your input flag is 1, next instruction that is branching instruction is going to be skipped. Otherwise, next instruction is going to be executed. If your flag is 1, next instruction is skipped. If your flag is 0, next instruction is executed. In this, we have used this for input output device, you are going to be continuously checking the flag. If it is 1, that means your input device or output device requires to complete some task. Okay, depending upon you, if your input flag is 1, that means your input device want to send you data. If your output flag is 1, that means your output device is uh, going to accepting your data. So that we are first, for if you check, if you consider for the input device, then we will first check for the input flag. If it is 1, then you require to store in, you, you got the data from the input device and you require to store in, into some register. Okay, so uh, here we will check for the input flag. If it is 1, then you have to do some other task. But if it is not 1, then you have to jump to the CIF, then continuously check for the flag. Okay, if it is 0, then it will go into next instruction that is I and P. And in IMP instruction, it will take the data from the input register and then it, it will going to be output at output. Then that means your input character is going to in output side and then store it into SHR location also, CHR location also and then hold it. Okay. So by this way, you can use this input instruction or you can say IMP instruction by using this SKI flag. For the output character, we will first load the character into accumulator because input output device can communicate only with the accumulator. Okay, so whatever device, whatever content, whatever character you want to send, you have to first store into accumulator. By using this LD instruction, we are storing this into accumulator. After that, we will check for the output flag. If it is 1, then <coughs> if it is 0, then your next instruction is going to be skipped. That is uh, checking for the flag. B and C O F that will jump to the C O F continuously it will check if your flag is 0. If it is 1 then it will go to the out instruction. In this instruction your character that you have stored into accumulator is going to be stored into output register and that by that output register it will go to the output device. Okay and by this way and after that we will use the HLD instruction so that your character is going in the output resistor and from that your output device and similarly for here yeah, we are accepting from the input device and going giving to the output resistor also and storing to the some location also we are doing two tasks in this input program that storing it into some location also and going giving into the output resistor also here we are only going giving it to the some output resistor only Okay, so by this way we can use this input output resistor for the programming. Okay, uh, so here we are ending for today's session. If you have any query, then you can contact.